guess the microphone works. So uh, thank you for coming today. Um, thank you for attending our session here at DrupalCon. We are going to talk or cover the uh, State of the Union for the panel's ecosystem and a lot of the things it encompasses. And we are your panelists for the day. Um, there may be one or two other puns. Um, no animals were harmed in the creation. Um, so uh, my name is Damien McKenna. Um, I'm a lead Drupal architect with Media Current, and you can find me on the interwebs and Drupal.org and everywhere as Damien McKenna. Um, Media Current's a development shop out of Atlanta. We build some pretty cool things. And for the last several years, we've been heavily evolve, involved in the panels um, system and contributing and improving it. Um, I'm also uh, honored to introduce uh, our other panelists today. We have Caroline Boyden, a web developer from UC Berkeley. Uh, we have uh, David Snowpeck, a Drupal consultant with uh, MVPcreator.com, and Jacob Perry, a Drupalist with the Drupal Association, and Tim Plunkett, a senior engineer with Acquia. And we're going to present different pieces today, and at the end, you'll get to answer or ask questions. We ask you to please hold the questions to the end and so we can get through um, our notes first. So uh, our agenda today is fairly simple. We're going to cover the past of the panels ecosystem, the present, and where we're looking to take it in the future. So before we get into that, I just want to give a brief explanation as to what panels is. Um, so, panels is power. It's uh, editorial flexibility for a site. It um, provides a lot of flexibility and functionality, uh, most of which is through a fairly straightforward uh, drag and drop interface. It's also a flexibility. There is tremendous amount of flexibility provided by it uh, through standalone pages, entity integration, uh, custom layouts, revisions, uh, internationalization, inline editing, on and on and on. Uh, it's also a system called context, not to be confused with the context module, but it's an ability for a piece on a page to have some consideration for where it is. Uh, it's also extensibility. It has a fairly solid API and uh, with both normal hooks, but it's all its own plugin system. And it's also speed. <clears throat> uh, along with its plugin system that only loads things when it's needed, it has a huge amount of flexibility for controlling the caching of pages and how they work. And <clears throat> it's also site control. Pretty much everything is exportable using a standard C tools exportable system, but also with features that is obviously heavily used on Drupal 7. And it's safe. There is a tremendous amount of uh, permissions available for different things that you can do with panels. And that allows you to narrowly control what different people within an organization that manages a site can do. So you can um, remove things that somebody hasn't had training to use yet. And as they gain more experience and get more training, you can give them more and more control over the system. And it's also at this point relatively, we feel very stable uh, for use on a site. And we think it's kind of awesome. So in summary, it's power flexibility, context, extensibility, speed, site control, and safe. So, awesome. So, uh, at that note, let me pass it over to Jacob. Hello. So, I'm Jacob. I'm one of the co-maintainers for panels uh, and C-Tools. And so, a little brief history, because people ask, oh, does panels do this, panels do that? Um, and I hear a lot about the past. So, how many people here were Drupal 4.7? Anyone use panels, four points? Wow. Panels in 4.7. What? I know you. 
Um, yeah, 4 7, let's do block layouts. 2006, I was just a little Padawan, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, pretty simple, good little MVP. Um, didn't do a whole lot yet, but it was neat. So, panels two then came out. Um, Sam Boyer joined, so you know, that's a whole bunch of coolness. How many people used uh, panels two in Drupal 5? Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, a little more flexibility. Need views, uh, you know, that's sort of what started the whole caching and context debate. Do I use context? Do I use panels? And, and um, you know, it was still in its infancy. Um, how many people use panels two in Drupal 6? Ah, even more, even more. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so, so we're getting there, we're getting there. So Drupal uh, 6 had panels three. And I presume almost everyone here is using panels three, right? How many people have got panels three? Okay, let me reverse that. How many people aren't using panels? Okay, you're nice, nice, okay. So yeah, uh, now we're using Ctools, which is a collection of APIs that um, I, w I call uh, Core Plus. Um, it has uh, a whole bunch of awesome new features. Uh, in Drupal 6, it was a little bit slow, but cache was starting to get there. A lot of the things that we hadn't done yet in Drupal 7 uh, were getting started. We had the IPE editor, um, and that context versus panels thing kept, you know, per persevering. Um, but we had more flexibility, and we even had, uh, you know, we have quite a few people using it. We still have a lot of people using it to this day. Those bumps, you can ignore those. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, so Drupal 6 panels was awesome, um, and that sort of led us to Drupal 7, uh, which we will talk about here in a moment. Um, but I wanted to really quick, how many people are using Drupal 6 still? Okay, so this next slide is fun for you. So its status is frozen. Let it go. Um, uh, so there will be one final release. Um, uh, after that final release, uh, there's security fixes only, and we're going to follow the Drupal 6 um, core support window. So when Drupal 8 comes out, we have three months after that, and then when core security releases stop, so will the panels and Ctools releases. So that's, that's where we're, we're going there with that. Um, and otherwise, no further development in Drupal 6. All the stuff will be in Drupal 7. You'll see there's an asterisk. Keep the dream alive if you want to become a D6 branch maintainer. Low commitment because this time next year, you'll be out of a job as the branch maintainer. So, uh, yes, these are actually the uh, remaining issues for Drupal 6. Um, there's what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, my hope is that possibly for those Drupal 6 people uh, come to the sprints on Friday. That's sort of a recurring theme that I'll start right now. Um, let's get those uh, RTBC issues and roll the Drupal 6 version. And I really, really would love a Drupal 6 person to come because I totally forgot what Drupal 6 is about. That said, let's go to the present. Hi everyone, uh, if you don't remember from the introductions in the beginning, I'm David Snopek, D. Snopek on Drupal.org. I'm one of the co-maintainers of Panoply. The other two co-maintainers are Matt Cheney at Pantheon and Tom Kirkpatrick at System Seed. Just want to give a quick shout out to Pantheon. Uh, back in December, my first child was born. And I was talking to Matt Cheney and told him, you know, hey man, I'm not going to be able to contribute to Panoply like I did in the past. And he was able to get uh, Pantheon to step up and start sponsoring my work on Panoply so I can continue contributing to it. So I'm very grateful to them. So earlier, Damien was talking about all the power and flexibility that comes with panels. But this is actually kind of one of panels' weaknesses, right? It can almost do too many awesome things. When you install panels and open up the page manager, uh, you're essentially facing a blank canvas with infinite options. A new user might ask, uh, what are some things that I can do with panels? You know, what can't you do with panels, right? Um, even an advanced user who's been using panels for many years might not know the full breadth of things that you can do with it. Personally, I kind of hated panels uh, until I found Panoply. Um, you know, there's all these new concepts, new terms, new tools. There's kind of a steep learning curve. And all I wanted to do was put a block in a layout. And I thought, you know, what do I need all this stuff for? But it was actually uh, Panoply that led me to fall in love with panels and start digging into, you know, 
How is it doing that? How can I change it? How can I extend it? How can I take that and use it somewhere else? And uh, you know, eventually led me to become as involved in the panels ecosystem as I am now. So I'm really excited that there were a couple people here who said that they don't use panels. So when we're looking at Panoply, I hope that it can you know, uh, help encourage you to see you know, some of the things that panels can do. So yeah, by looking at Panoply, I'm hoping that you can find some inspiration for some things that panels can do that maybe you didn't know about next time you're in front of that blank canvas. So Panoply is many things, but one thing it absolutely is not, it is not a module. Uh, it's not something that you put in your site's all modules folder and enable. But what you can do is install it as a distribution. Uh, who here is familiar with the idea of a Drupal distribution? Awesome, quite a few people. Uh, so a Drupal distribution is Drupal core plus some contrib modules, themes, some default configuration that you install just like Drupal core. Uh, except out of the box, it has some additional functionality. So for example, there's the restaurant distribution for creating restaurant websites. You install it just like Drupal core, but out of the box it has an online menu, an online reservation system, a map, all the stuff that you expect in a restaurant website. Uh, or you can install Panoply's individual feature modules on a vanilla Drupal site. So Panoply is made up of a dozen or so features modules for each of the components of Panoply. So we have a Panoply admin module, which has the admin improvements. We have a Panoply WYSIWYG module, which has the WYSIWYG configuration. So you can take just Panoply WYSIWYG and install it on your vanilla Drupal site if you want to steal our WYSIWYG configuration. Uh, or you can use it as a base distribution for creating your own custom distributions. So similar to how you have base themes that you can use to create your own custom theme, you can use Panoply as a base distribution to create your own distribution. And uh, some examples are Open Atrium, Open Academy, and many others. So what does Panoply do beyond vanilla Drupal core? Well, it tries to improve the user experience of Drupal. And one of the ways it does that is by including WYSIWYG, previews, live previews in as many places as possible. So seeing the thing you're editing as you're editing it. Um, allowing you to edit content in place. So editing content on the page that you're viewing it rather than going to some separate edit form. And various improvements to the Drupal admin interface. So a walk through Panoply is a walk through the panels ecosystem. There's definitely a lot more to Panoply than just panels. But all the really coolest of the cool stuff is from panels. And Panoply really ties uh, the panels ecosystem together in a cohesive way. Um, you know, on any given project, you might not use all of the modules in the panels ecosystem because you only use what you need, right? But seeing all of them together uh, configured in a coherent way allows you to see sort of the intended vision of Drupal through panels. So let's take a look at some stuff. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is changing the layout of a page in place. And this is using the panels module and the panels IPE module that is part of the um, panels module that's included. So this is the default Panoply homepage. Down at the bottom, is that even visible? Here, let me see if I can up the quality. Come on, YouTube. Hmm, let's try doing the non-YouTube. That's a bit better. All right. So this is the default Panoply homepage. Down at the bottom, you'll see these two buttons. Uh, one is change layout. Click that button, and you get a menu of possible layouts to choose from. Currently selected is this uh, sidebar on the right. We're going to switch to a sidebar on the left. Uh, this screen is just about sort of mapping the regions from one layout to the next. Here, we don't have to do anything. Click save, and this page now has a sidebar on the left. It's already live. So we've changed the layout of the page on the page itself. Uh, next, we are going to place new content in a region on a page in place, again using panels in the panels IPE. So again, here's the default Panoply front page. This time we're going to click this customize this page button down at the bottom. And you'll see the different regions on the page. We'll click this plus button in the sidebar region. It shows us a menu of possible things we can add. We're going to click add video.
And then here we can just uh, paste a YouTube link. It's using the uh, media module. You'll see that a preview appears on the right uh, as soon as we're filling in the values on the left. Click Save. And then click Save down at the bottom. And this page is already live with our awesome kitten video on the right sidebar. Oh, and we can also, I think I maybe accidentally skipped part of the video. Um, if we click Customize This Page Again, we can also drag and drop the different pieces of content around on the page. So we're going to take our kitten video, put it in the main content region, and click Save. And now we have bigger kittens. Uh, this is a much more ex uh, advanced example. Uh, we're going to use the page manager to lay out the content add edit form. So in vanilla Drupal, the content creation or edit form is just one big long column with each of the fields to edit in it. Using Page Manager, you can apply a layout to that form, you know, a two column, three column, whatever you want, and rearrange the different fields. So that is what we are going to do. Uh, first, we're just going to go look at the add content form for this testing content type that I created for this demo. Uh, you'll see that the default uh, Panoply content add edit page puts it into a two column layout, similar to Drupal 8 and it puts the submit buttons in the right sidebar. We are going to move those from the right sidebar to the main content area. So we can go to structure, pages. We're going to find the node edit page. Here you can see some uh, variants. These are provided by Panoply. This bottom one is kind of like the default fallback. We're going to clone it. going to add a selection rule that says we're only going to load this new variant when editing our testing content type. And we have to rearrange the variants because we need to have more specific ones come above the general fallback. Then we're going to the content tab and we're going to click and drag this pane that represents the submit buttons from the right sidebar to the main content area on the left. Click uh, save and update, or update and save. Then we're going to go back to our content add page for our testing content type. And you can see the uh, submit buttons are now on the left. So this is a simple example of a very advanced concept, right? Because you can rearrange this form uh, using anything that page manager allows you to do. You could have a different layout of a particular uh, content types, add edit page depending on your role. You could have a different structure for it depending on a particular value on the node that you're editing. So it's super powerful. Uh, next we're going to look at creating new widgets uh, using the fieldable panel panes module. I think this is the video. What are we on the fourth video? Fifth video? This is not it. All right, so when you click this Customize This Page button and click one of these plus buttons, you get this menu of possible options. In Panoply, we call these widgets. Uh, some of these come from custom code. Some of them come from views. Some of them come from feudable panel panes, which is what we're going to show here. So you can create new widgets similar to that add video widget we saw earlier for the users of your site using fieldable panel panes. And creating a new fieldable panel pane is super similar to creating a new content type uh, in Drupal, which you're probably familiar with. Uh, you go to Structure, Fieldable Panel Panes, click Add. We'll give it a name, My Special Widget. And then now you'll see the Manage uh, Fields tab that you're probably familiar with creating content types and adding fields. We're going to add an image field. And this is the normal field settings form. We'll just save the defaults. And if we go back to the home page, click Customize This Page, click the plus button on the regions, you'll see there is now uh, this 
extra category, and our My Special Widget is an option, and we can create one. You'll see our image field that we added earlier. So this is a super powerful tool because it allows you to uh, extend this menu of options that your users have to create using only the uh, admin UIs, just by pointing and clicking and configuring things in Drupal. Next, we're going to look at the Panelizer module. Uh, one of the things it allows you to do is add extra ad hoc content to a node. So if you want just one node on your entire site to have a different layout and some different piece of content on it, you can do that with the Panelizer module. Oops, we're not using YouTube. So first we'll create a new node. Give it a name or a title. Put some text in the body. Click Publish. And then we'll use the Change Layout button on the bottom to switch the layout from sidebar on the left to sidebar on the right. Click Save. Now only this node on the site has this layout. We'll click Customize this page and add a new image to the sidebar. So in general, uh, Drupal's really great at letting you create new content types and decide like this content type should look like this. But Drupal is, or Drupal core at least, is less good at making like one-off nodes that look unique. But the Panelizer module can allow you to do that. The Panelizer module can also let you change the display of a content type's view mode. So if you wanted to apply a layout and rearrange the content on a content type's teaser, you can do that. So this is a view that shows the teasers of our testing content type. And uh, currently it's pretty boring, just you know, the title, the image, the body, the links, all just in one column. And we are going to switch that to appear in two columns. So to do that, we go to Structure, Content Types. There's our testing content type on the bottom. We'll click this Panelizer link over on the right. Uh, we'll select the Teaser. Go to the Layout tab. We'll switch from this one column layout to this sidebar on the right layout. And then here we're clicking and dragging the field that, or the pane that represents the image field from the main content area to the sidebar. So when we go back to our view, you can see that now the image field is over on the right. So anytime a teaser is used on your site for this content type, it will have this layout. Uh, so far, we've been looking at uh, just rearranging the fields from a node on the page, but you can actually edit the content of a field while using the panel's in-place editor, using the FAPE module. So this is just a normal piece of content. We're going to click Customize this page, and we click the Settings button on this image field. We can actually change the content of the image field from this vegetables uh, image to our kitten image. We'll click Save. We'll scroll down to the body field. We'll click the little settings icon there. And we can change the text content of the body field right here in the in-place editor without having to go to the edit form. Click Save. And there we go. Now the piece of content has uh, different values for the image field and the body field. Uh, the FATE module isn't technically a part of the Panels ecosystem. It doesn't use Panels, but it's sort of an honorary member of, of the Panels ecosystem. It's very similar to the FATE module we just looked at before, but allows you to edit the content of individual fields on tabs. So you can create a edit body tab for your content type, and then users can edit the value of the field that way. But because it is not directly Panels related, we're going to skip this video. 
Uh, the last one we're going to talk about is the Panels Everywhere module. Um, so far, we've just been using panels to take control of the content area on the page. So your theme is still responsible for rendering the header, the breadcrumbs, the footer, all that stuff, and Panels has just been messing with that content area. But using Panels Everywhere, you can actually have Panels take over the entire page and render things like your site header, your breadcrumbs, your footer, and all of that. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to apologize for how ugly the site in this demo looks. Uh, on a real site, you know, you'd create a child theme and uh, theme it so that it actually looks nice. Uh, but just bear with me for the purpose of this demo. So up here, this is the site header. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Panels Everywhere and the Page Manager to move the uh, site header from the top of the page over into the right sidebar. This is something you would never do on a real site, right? Like, why would you want the site header in the sidebar? But it demonstrates the power that um, Panels Everywhere gives you. You can drastically change the way your site looks uh, using any of the selection rules that you normally have in Page Manager. So you could say, you know, users of this role, we're going to completely change the layout to look like this. Or um, anything that you can do in Page Manager, you can use to affect the layout of your site. And since this is such an advanced demo, I didn't feel the need to talk through each of the pieces, but we're able to make these types of drastic changes. So that was our walkthrough. Um, you know, those were the modules that we're talking about when we're talking about the panels ecosystem, so I hope that gives you a little bit of context. Um, I hope, here, hold on. full screen. All right, so I hope uh, you were able to see a couple of things that you didn't previously know panels could do, and we're able to get more of an idea of what a panels taking over everything universe looks like. Uh, so we were looking at Panoply. It's not the only distribution that does awesome things with panels. Uh, here's a couple of other examples if you'd like to check those out as well. Next, uh, Caroline's going to talk about accessibility. So hey everyone, I'm Caroline Boyden and I work for UC Berkeley. Uh, the University of California has a policy and the policy states that all websites and web applications have to be accessible to people with disabilities, including people who use assistive technology. So when we decided to build our distribution on top of Panoply, we basically committed ourselves to the project of continually improving Panoply's accessibility. And we're also taking the improvements we're making and contributing them back into C tools and into panels and any module we encounter along the way to make things more accessible. So law and policy aren't the only reason we're doing this. We've also found that uh, making things more accessible adds value in some unexpected ways. And one of them is it's improving our automated testing because um, if you have a widget that you can't operate with the keyboard only, for example, you might find that whatever tool you're using for front-end automated testing can't operate that, that widget either. So it's really, uh, it's really improved things for us in that regard, which was sort of unexpected. So I want to show you some stuff we have in progress. We're looking at the C-Tools modal plus uh, the panel's IPE, which is a lot of the stuff that David just showed you, uh, on Drupal 7. And there are some keyboard accessibility issues with this. Now, we like to start with keyboard accessibility because once you fix that, you have a pretty good foundation, a baseline, on which you can build in better accessibility for assist other assistive technology or other situations. And also, we found that at Berkeley, five out of six students who come into the assistive technology lab for help have a repetitive stress injury or some other mobility condition that means they really shouldn't be using a mouse, they should be using the keyboard or uh, an alternative input device. So uh, I'm going to show you a little before video that uh, will demonstrate some of these problems. Uh, let me see if you can see this here. So, uh, okay. 
So uh, activating the add content button with the keyboard, you can definitely do, but now I want to get into that list of categories. So I'm tabbing forward, 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 but nothing's happening. Uh, my keyboard focus is completely lost and no amount of tabbing is getting me anywhere. So um, luckily I can hit the escape key to dismiss the dialogue, but I'm unable to add any content to this page with the keyboard. Now that's Firefox. Uh, Chrome is a little bit better, so switching to Chrome and activating the add content button, um, you probably can't see it because of the resolution, but what's happening is my focus highlight is moving through the admin menu at the top of the page. So I'm tabbing through the page that's behind the dialog. Now eventually, if I keep tabbing forward, I eventually, I make it into the dialog. But when I hit enter to activate a link that changes the content of the dialog, uh, then my focus is bumped back into the page behind the dialog again, and I have to tab, 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 tab to get back to where I was. So that's kind of a pain, uh, and we don't really want to put our users through that. So we do have a solution for this. Um, after a whole lot of coding and testing and really frankly just breaking things and then fixing them again, a lot of work from, from David and from myself, we've basically fixed keyboard accessibility. So uh, this slide is just for reference. These are some patches we've contributed to panels and C-tools. Uh, this are the issues in the queue. You can check them out. And my next video is the after video. It's the exact same site, and all I've done to it is apply these two patches. So now, when you hit enter to activate the add content button, uh, your focus immediately starts on the first item in the dialog, which happens to be the close link. You can tab forward and backward through the list of categories, and tabbing to the activity category and hitting enter, your focus immediately starts on the first available option. Then you can tab to the one you want, which in this case is a who's online. That brings up the configuration form, which you can operate with the keyboard. Hit enter, uh, sorry, spacebar to check that box, override the title, then tab to the finish button and hit enter, tab to the save button and hit enter, and that's it. Uh, we've successfully added content to this page using the keyboard only, no mouse required. Um, <laughs> woo, okay, Thanks. Thanks, so obviously I like that, right? It's pretty cool. Um, but there's a lot more work to be done and there's some stuff we're gonna be looking at in the near future. So for future accessibility improvements, we're gonna look at Media Browser, which is included in Panoply. Right now, Media Browser is not operable with a keyboard. In order to select one of those images, you have to click it with the mouse. And also, once you've selected it, it's hard to tell which one you've selected. Uh, in this screenshot, one of the items is selected, but it's kind of hard to distinguish from the others. Even, you know, looking at it down here on the screen, it's hard to distinguish. We're also gonna look at Module Filter, which is unfortunately no longer accessible with the keyboard because those button thingies, they aren't actually real buttons. They're divs with behavior attached. Not focusable, not operable with the keyboard. And finally, we're gonna look at drag and drop. You saw a lot of drag and drop in David's demos. And right now, you can't do that with the keyboard. So um, this is gonna be a big challenge. It's probably gonna take a lot of work, but we're really committed to this work and we're pretty confident that we can get some real big wins for accessibility into panels and C-tools and Drupal so that they really benefit everybody. And um, how many of you out there write code? Okay, and how many of you build sites? Okay, so a lot of you are involved in building things and I just wanna ask you all to think about accessibility when you're writing code or when you're building sites or whatever it is that you do with Drupal. So if everyone kind of puts just a little bit of effort into making things more accessible, we can really make things uh, better for everybody. So, uh, thanks. And I'm gonna hand it over to Jacob now for uh, some updates on Drupal 7 status. All right, 
So that's a little bit about Drupal 7. Uh, let's talk a little bit about where Panoply is. So most of the big features for Panoply that you've seen uh, have been uh, done. So they've already been planned and they're in progress right now and really trying to get uh, the stability part done and getting into maintenance mode. Uh, the biggest and most exciting parts you've seen here is really uh, improving the accessibility and uh, getting that part really into uh, into panels and then up to C tools because all of that's sort of related together. Um, the next part is panels and C tools. So as many people have seen, we do about one release a year. It's pretty stable um, <laughs> until we do a release. Um, <laughs> and then we do another one. Uh, there is bug fixes and security. Um, it's mainly in maintenance mode, but we're accepting patches that are reviewed um, RTBC by the community. Um, and similar to uh, Drupal 8, uh, when Drupal 8 comes out, all of the uh, features that we're doing in Drupal 7 three months after will go into security release only mode, similar to Drupal 6. So. Uh, we're also planning to do a 3.6 and a 1.8 release, maybe this weekend. Did I say something about Friday? Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Anyone here for a Saturday, Sunday sprints? Okay, we got a few. Good, nice. Come to the extended sprints. So we have 26 RTBC issues for C-Tools and 20 RTBC issues for panels. So that's uh, really awesome. Uh, we might be able to even get that through so we can get all of uh, we can get another release uh, out for those so um, yes oh and RTBC for accessibility those two patches you saw um, so a few more tests on it and we should be able to roll those into the next version cool and now Damien will talk about panelizer okay so I had to fix that. So uh, Panelizer at this point is what I consider mostly stable. Um, so there are a number of things left, but I, I feel it's getting close to a 3.2 release, finally, after two years and more. Uh, there are several new features in 3.2 that are really beneficial to building distributions, but uh, some other user interface improvements. Uh, Big blocker right now is revision support, um, both working with core revisions, but also when you get into using something like workbench moderation or the revisioning module and building uh, workflows with content and revisions. And, there, and then especially when you throw IPE into the mix, it gets rather complicated. Um, but hoping to get that, uh, spend a lot of time on that soon. Uh, the next one is panels everywhere. At this point, it is mostly stable. Uh, it's very close to a 1.0 release, finally. Uh, the key blocker on that is there are some form errors need to solve that uh, where basically the form error area doesn't show up, which is kind of bad, and it doesn't highlight the form fields that have the errors, which, again, is bad. But um, structurally, besides that, it's working pretty well. Um, fieldable panels panes is a block alternative entity system that works particularly well with panels. At this point, it, it's, again, mostly stable. The 1.5 release works pretty well, but there are a few issues with it. It's uh, very close to 1.6. There are uh, just a couple of blockers to work through to make sure that it works correctly with, like, the entity API and you can do queries properly with it and whatnot. Um, fieldable Field API, pane editor, and field API tab editor. At this point, considering those stable, they don't do very much. Um, at this point, it's pretty much down to bug fixes and security updates as needed. Uh, and again, we have a code sprint specifically focused on Panoply and the panels ecosystem on Friday. So hope to see you there. So we're going to be focusing on stability improvements again on Friday. Uh, find Jacob in the Coder Lounge on the day uh, as we work through these stability problems. So at this point, I'm going to hand you back to David to take us into the future. So the short version is that there will be panels in Drupal 8. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now the slightly longer version. Uh, so in Drupal 7, we rolled our own everything. Um, the core APIs were not powerful enough for panels, so C tools filled the gap. One example of this is core blocks versus C tools content types. Uh, blocks are pretty weak in Drupal 7. Uh, they can only be placed one time. Uh, they have oversimplistic visibility rules. I think you can control like it appears or doesn't appear on this list of paths and it appears or doesn't appear on these content types, right? And that's it. They have no sense of context. Like how do you make a block that pulls data from the node you're currently looking at? And the answer is very hackily, right? So they're not powerful enough for panels. In D8, panels will use blocks. Uh, D8 blocks can be placed multiple times. Uh, we have condition plugins in core for doing really complex visibility rules. And there's context in core. So finally, blocks are powerful enough for panels. Uh, in D8, panels can use the core APIs because now they're awesome. Uh, instead of C tools plugins, we have the Drupal 8 plugin system. Uh, instead of content types, we'll have D8 blocks. Instead of access plugins, we'll have D8 conditions. Instead of task handlers, we'll have D8 display variants. And there's the context API. So panels is finally coming out of its silo. It's no longer you know, its own weird little land over here. It's going to be able to participate more in uh, Drupal core and all the rest of Contrib that works with Drupal core. And this is possible because many of the ideas that were pioneered in C tools are now part of Drupal core. Uh, this was done mainly by the views in core initiative. In order to bring views into core, all of these concepts from C tools need to be brought in as well. But not everything uh, that we need ended up in core. So there will still be a few contrib modules. Uh, for example, the page manager module that Tim Plunkett maintains has been doing a ton of awesome work on. Um, and Chris Vanderwaters just started doing some cool work there too. This is really, I think, where most of the work on bringing uh, panels to Drupal 8 has been done so far. Uh, layout plugins, we have this cool little module called Layout Plugin uh, that allows you to register layouts and provide a twig template. It's going to be not only used by panels, but also Display Suite. So both panels and Display Suite will be using the same layouts. And all the rest of the stuff uh, will end up in the Drupal 8 version of C tools. So style plugins, uh, the wizard API, Chris Vanderwater has been doing some awesome work on that, and various specific plugins. So uh, Drupal core now has the plugin manager and the plugin types for all of these things that used to be in C tools, uh, like blocks and condition plugins, but it doesn't have the specific plugins that C tools used to have in uh, Drupal 7. So uh, C tools is going to need to include a whole bunch of condition plugins, blocks, and stuff uh, in order to have parity with what we had in Drupal 7. With the new release cycle, uh, we'll be able to add new features at Drupal uh, 8.1, 8.2. So it's possible, even, you know, we won't have it in, in Drupal 8.0.0, but it's still possible that one day we could get panels merged into Drupal core. Uh, we'll probably be doing it progressively. You know, each time there's an opportunity to add new features, we'll start trying to get some of the lower level stuff merged in. I think uh, Layout Plugin uh, is a strong candidate for getting merged relatively early. It's super simple. Um, some of the stuff we're putting in C tools, I could see going into uh, Drupal 8 in point releases. And if we get enough of that stuff in there, maybe one day we'll have all of panels. But first, we've got to prove it out in Trib. So here's a quick demo of uh, panels in Drupal 8. It's a super simplistic demo. It really doesn't show all of the stuff that's even possible now. Um, but yeah, you go to structure, pages, just like uh, going to the page manager in Drupal 7. I'm gonna click the add page button, give our page a label and a path. Now we're going to add a display variant and choose the panels variant. We'll give our display variant a label. There's a title. We're not going to change that. Uh, and select one of the layouts. Um, you can't really see it, but it's the um, single column and two column layout that you might know from the Drupal 7 version of panels. Then we'll click this add new block. We're going to choose the powered by Drupal block. 
I'm going to select which region it should go into. We're going to put it in the left side. And then we'll click Add Block again. Again, select the Powered by Drupal uh, block, because we can play blocks multiple times, and put another one in the right side region. Click Update Display Variant, then we'll go visit the URL, and there you have a layout with some blocks in it. Uh, so this demo used uh, Drupal 8 Beta 10, uh, Page Manager 1.0 Alpha 10, Layout Plugin 1.0 Alpha 10, and Panels 3.0 Alpha 10. So you'll see that we're syncing the Alpha releases with the Drupal 8 Beta releases to try and make it easier to know what is compatible with what and make it easier for you guys to help contribute and help us get it done. So that was uh, sort of the core of Panels. Next, let's talk about the status of some of the rest of the panel's ecosystem modules for Drupal 8. Uh, so Panoply, you know, first, we're just focused on getting panels in Drupal 8 done, but we are committed to try and have at least an 2.0 alpha 1 on the day that uh, Drupal 8.0.0 is released. <laughs> uh, so for CTools, panels, page manager, as you saw, they're a work in progress. Um, they exist and kind of do something, right? Um, there's still a lot of work going on. Uh, Chris Vanderwater is working on some patches for Page Manager that make it look a whole lot more like Page Manager in Drupal 7. Um, and those will be getting finished in the next couple of weeks, so definitely uh, stay tuned. And the goal is to have a beta by Drupal 8.0.0, hopefully with an upgrade path from Drupal 7. Uh, the rest of the modules, FAPE, you know, uh, to be determined. Uh, I could see that being merged into CTools since it's kind of a basic uh, module. Uh, fieldable panel panes, um, you know, since we're using blocks in panels now and blocks, custom blocks in Drupal 8 are entities that can have types and fields, like maybe we'll just use custom blocks. Maybe it won't be necessary. Um, panels everywhere, panelizer, to be determined. You know, we're waiting to see... Uh, this is another one of Damien's fun puns, until the panel paint drees. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're waiting to see how panels uh, comes together and then we'll decide what to do with those modules. And fate will be ported. Very definitive. <laughs> Damien says since it's such a tiny module, it's no problem. I'll pass it back to Damien. So, um, because this is an open source project and everything, uh, we would appreciate some help, obviously. Uh, so, if you're able to, please contribute. Uh, we are very, very eager to have people just help out and do a little bit of issue queue triage. If you've ever looked at the issue queues for panels and C tools and everything, there are lots of simple things where people asking, how do I do this? Or um, lots of simple things where you know, somebody needs some a common one is somebody uploads a patch but doesn't change the status to say needs review uh, lots of very simple things and for that you don't need any experience developing or whatnot just um, looking around you can pick up a lot uh, then obviously reviewing some of the many many patches people have uploaded you, um, you don't need a lot of experience but uh, just being able to download a patch and apply it and then obviously if you're into it and have the skills or even just want to try uh, we would be delighted to have people help work out uh, fixes for bugs or even um, at times steps to reproduce a bug so we can so somebody else can fix it uh, some experience is obviously a little more necessary for this but you don't have to be an absolute expert so how to get started? We have a weekly meeting on IRC on the free node network in the Drupal Scotch chat room. And it's on Tuesday at noon Central Standard Time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. And there's also a 
D8 meta issue, which is a good starting point if you want to get a, if you really want to get into helping with D8, or with the panels thing on D8. That explains a lot of the plans and the architecture and stuff. So again, code sprint on Friday. Um, so in summary then, uh, the status updates of the union is that for Drupal 7, we're considering everything to be fairly stable. Uh, there are still a number of bugs we're trying to work through and fix, and we're focused on improving accessibility. Then obviously on D8, everything is still in a, a work in progress state with some hopeful goals. Uh, and again, good Sprint Friday. So uh, just before we finish up, I'd like to offer thanks to Earl Miles, Merlin and Chaos, who wrote um, panels back in the day and and then also Sam Boyer who helped steer panels three and C tools architecture back in, uh, for Drupal six and into seven and Daniel Weiner who uh, also helped with C tools and panels Chris Vanderwater who has been doing a tremendous amount of work on panels for Drupal eight and the whole ecosystem there along with Tim, and all of the contributors over the years who have helped out. So huge round of applause for everybody. <laughs> and also thanks to the many companies that have uh, paid for us to work on the clock, either for the companies or for clients, uh, to work on all of these issues and to work on further improvements over the years. So uh, thank you, and any questions? I know we're a little over, but we do have some time, especially given we're going into the lunch or an evening break. Any questions from the floor? What's the status of the idea of retiring for the panel tools and for the EPK? Sorry, could your, is the microphone on? It's close, okay. closer. Uh, what's, what's the status of the idea of retiring Drupal panel panes in favor of EPK? <laughs> Field of retiring fieldable panel panes? Oh, um, that's kind of a lofty goal that uh, in Drupal 7, many people came up with the idea of, you know, we need something like blocks only that's entity based, we can add fields to it. Uh, fieldable panel panes was one of them, Bean was another, and ECK kind of reared its head and uh, at this point has a fairly stable version to but there's a lot of architecture that they want to go into version three to have translations and revisions and stuff. So it's kind of a lofty goal. I don't know if we'll specifically get there, but there's just so much repetition between them all. It'd be nice to do. Uh, I am, they're all kind of redundant in Drupal 8. So uh, the Drupal 8 version will probably be just a GUI around what's already in core. Thank you. Hey guys, um, we barely just scratched the surface of panels uh, at the shop I'm at. Um, I've got two questions if you don't mind. Um, so I didn't really know that Panoply did all this. Is panels uh, Panoply an alternative to paragraphs if you're familiar with that? Um, or can they work together in a more powerful way? The um, power good. Sorry about that. Uh, so paragraphs can definitely work along with uh, panels in Panoply. Uh, Open Atrium uses paragraphs, uh, and it's based on Panoply. So they, they really, um, there's no conflict. They can be complementary, for sure. So paragraph is another one of those things like field collection where you can group multiple things into, say, a node form and have repeating fields and stuff. So cool. That's actually really good news. Um, and then, can you apply panels layouts uh, to a specific node type outside of the node default layout? I know that I, I don't think I'm saying the name of that right, but there's this mm -hmm. node default layout that you can attach to panels and then use a variant to specify uh, what content type you're going to be affecting. Is there a way to do that outside of that so you don't have um, you know one for every content type or even if mm -hmm. you have I, I actually uh, specifically need it for uh, specific nodes within mm -hmm. the content type. Right. So that's perfect for panelizer. That That is panelizer, what you just described, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to say. Sure. Uh, one of the things in panelizer 
Panelizer was a replacement for panel nodes that originally came in Drupal, or for panels one for Drupal 5, and didn't really change much. I guess but maybe an example, um, as, as we're going through content strategy for Drupal.org, we're looking at changing like the project pages into groups and using, uh, potentially, not not totally sure yet, but probably using Panelizer, so like every project page can do their own layouts um, because using that potential asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so with fieldable panel panes is retired, uh, there'll be a transition of time between going from fieldable panel panes to these new custom blocks. We have quite a few widgets we built with fieldable panel panes because we believe kind of a crossover so if it's retired, there will be a crossover period, perhaps? You mean like, will there be an upgrade path? Yeah. It is possible to build one. Um, for Panoply, we will have to build one. Uh, so I will say yes, there will be an upgrade path. Okay. Uh, my other question was about panelizer. Um, that, that was a big jump up for us. I, we love that over-the-top panels, you know, page manager. A lot easier to use for multiple content types. Uh, I don't know if it's more of a question or more than please you know, if we could, if you're still determining whether to do that, if we could do that or if we could help or something. In, you mean in Drupal 8? Yes, in Drupal 8. Oh yeah, it'll happen. Okay, Panelizer mm. is going to get into Drupal 8 then? It, well, mean, not in it, core, but it'll, it'll happen. Oh, that, as trim. a contrary model. Oh yeah, yep, oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Scared me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's more a case of needing to make sure the foundation is there that Panelizer will use. Yeah. So B basically, we just haven't started yet. So when we were earlier, there was that list of modules, and I said to be determined. It basically is saying we, we haven't sat down and evaluated how we're going to do it and started writing code yet. I'm using panels everywhere. I really like being able to change the header based on the rest of the page, on the content type, and various other things. So I'd like to put in a strong plug for that. It seems like the more robust version of block would lend it, I was thinking that panels everywhere would almost become trivial if the blocks are more robust the way they sound like they would be. Yeah, I mean, the, so the, I've used panels everywhere before as well. There's also the blockify module, which basically takes like most of the site elements and makes them into blocks for you so you can kind of do half panels everywhere. Um, and that's basically done in core, like all the site logo, mm -hmm. You know, site name, all that, the search bar, all, everything is a block now anyway. And because you can place it in many different ways and contextually decide when it shows up, um, that's almost done for you. Yeah, it, it seems like it would be, but I, I would like to be certain that I don't lose that capability. I like yeah. so much of what I'm hearing about V8 that that just seems like almost a no-brainer for me. I think it's mostly just taking time to sit down, really evaluate exactly what people use panels everywhere for, and make sure everything's covered. Yeah, there, we could just decide we're done and everything's great. There might be a couple of things to clean up. Thank you. So I've built all my sites using panels and mostly use views content panes uh, for just about everything. With uh, moving into V8 with the new robustness of the block system, how is that going to affect views content panes? Is it still just as powerful? Um, they don't exist yet, but they will. They don't exist yet, so we just haven't written them. Um, I mean, there's already views blocks, and there's a couple of them that can, I mean, you know, so in views content panes, you can choose external to the views UI, you know, how many items there are, what fields show up and stuff. We kind of put, like, views content panes light into the views block system. Um, it can be expanded both in core and contrib. It's really easy to write the code, it just needs to be done. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say out of the gate we'll probably have a uh, equivalent of content panes in C tools to, to start with, but uh, because all of the things necessary to build them are in Drupal core, maybe we could get it into core for like 8.1, 8.2, something like that. Talk to me on Friday, that would be really fun to work on. Again, code sprint! <laughs> Get rid of that custom 
interesting layout without getting the team of us. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a bug for that? <laughs> uh, that's a great support request to actually put in the issue queue. Um, I'm not sure if you're getting a white screen of death and it, is it just like a regular install of panels? Uh, basically, I am doing a custom layout using Omega 4. So I, you know, I thought all I had to do was just, you know, delete the folder from my sub theme. And then just yeah, that'll, that'll break everything. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so what's the right way to do it? Uh, Open a support request and you should too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, add screenshots and steps to reproduce, and someone will help you. All right. Yeah. I would definitely yeah, thank you. I think that sounds like a bug that could potentially be fixed too, because I think what's happening is.